Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video we saw how the precession of mercury was very carefully observed and calculated to be about 5600 arc seconds per century. But when they tried to verify that and when they tried to analyze why the precession was such using the laws of Newton, the number they came up with was 5557 arc seconds per century. It appeared that mercury was processing faster than it was supposed to be under the known laws of Newton. The difference, 43 arc seconds per century. Wow, that is such a small angle over such a large amount of time. It is actually amazing they were actually, that they were able to come up with that difference. But nevertheless, they were pretty convinced there was a, a difference, significant difference that could not be explained. Now, the reason why now there is a difference there is because the general, the general theory of re relativity and the special theory of relativity indicates that time will run slower, first of all, because Mercury is closer to the strong gravitational force of the Sun, which tends to slow down time, and also Mercury uh, orbits around the Sun much faster than any other planet, which again would have an effect would have an effect due to the special theory of relativity again making time move slower in both cases and that time discrepancy is a large factor in describing why there's a difference of 43 arc seconds per century but how did they actually measure that 43 arc seconds well it turns out all the way back in 1859 urbain le verrier analyzed mercury's transitions across the sun's disk for all the transitions starting in 1697 all the way through 1848. So that's about close to 20 transitions that he looked at very carefully and based upon how the transition slowly changed over time, he was able to estimate that there was a discrepancy between the observed precession of Mercury and the calculated precession of Mercury of about 38 arc seconds per century. Then a few decades, decades later, in 1882, Simon Newcomb re-estimated that shift, went through all the work again a little bit more accurately, and he was able to come up with the difference of 43 arc seconds, which is now the known quantity of the difference between what we actually observe and what we should be observing if, of course, there wasn't such a thing as the special and general theory of relativity. So the equation that they derived then to explain that difference, when Einstein came up with the, with the theory and they finally derived the equation, this is what the equation ended up looking at. The difference in the shift and the units are going to be in radians per revolution. So for every revolution, for every orbit of Mercury around the Sun, there's going to be a slight shift in terms of radians and this is the equation that allowed them to calculate that number so when we went when they went through that here we have what we call the semi-major axis we use the letter a here's the period the time it takes for mercury to go around the sun once the speed of light and the eccentricity of the orbit so when we plug in all the numbers first of all the average distance to mercury from the sun about 57.9 million kilometers then the orbital period, almost 88 days, times the number of seconds in a day. We have to take that quantity and square it. The speed of light squared and 1 minus the eccentricity of the orbit of Mercury squared. Turns out that is 5 times 10 to the minus 7 radians per revolution. So every revolution, there's a slight shift in the orbit of Mercury due to the theories of relativity, the, the effects of the theories of relativity. It's a very small shift in radians in degrees per revolution. It's about 2.87 times 10 to the minus 5. And then in arc seconds per revolution, it's about one-tenth of an arc second for every orbit of Mercury around the Sun. Now, how does that add up to almost 43 arc seconds per century? Well, here it is. One revolution every 88 days, 100 years times 365 and a quarter days per century, and that ends up being 415 revolutions. So you take this many arc seconds per revolution times this many revolutions per century, and those indeed add up to about 43 arc seconds per century. So this is one of the ways in which the theories of relativity that Einstein came up with were actually proved to be correct. There is a measurable difference, and without taking that into account, we get the wrong observed result. The laws of Newton could not explain 
the precession motion of the orbit of Mercury. We had to take into account also the relativity effects due to the general relativity, which causes time to slow down in a strong gravitational field of the Sun, and the special relativity, which causes times to run slower for objects like Mercury that move very fast. And this is the result. That's how they proved the theory of relativity using the precession of Mercury.